Welcome to Rad Quarters. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound of parathyroid adenoma. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and this episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The outstanding images you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige ultrasound unit. We're going to review some cases of parathyroid adenoma, and I'll highlight key teaching points throughout. Let's start with a quick review of normal thyroid ultrasound anatomy. So there are two lobes, a right and a left thyroid lobe, connected by an isthmus crossing anterior to the trachea at the lower third of the gland. Thin strap muscles overlie the gland bilaterally. Lateral to these, we have the sternocleidomastoid muscles. The longus coli muscles are more posterior to the gland along the lateral aspects of the anterior vertebrae. And then we have the common carotid arteries, jugular veins, lateral to those. The esophagus we'll see usually located at the left posterior aspect of the gland. Don't confuse that with a thyroid nodule. <laughs> and then normally we'll have blood flow within the gland similar to the superficial solid organs. So let's look at a case. This was a male in his 60s presenting with history of primary hyperparathyroidism and symptomatic kidney stones. So here we're looking at a focused view of the left thyroid lobe. There's the trachea, here's the left thyroid, and then we have this ovoid hypocoic solid appearing nodule. You might initially think, could this be a thyroid nodule? When we turn sagittally, we can see that it is oriented in long axis with the gland longitudinally, and there's this thin echogenic line separating it from the gland. It measures about two centimeters, and when we add color Doppler imaging, we see that there is increased flow. It is a bit hyperemic relative to the adjacent gland. And this finding is typical for parathyroid adenoma. So this is a benign tumor of the parathyroid glands, and it's the most common cause of primary hyperparathyroidism. Patients usually present with elevated serum calcium and parathyroid hormone levels. On ultrasound, these adenomas will usually be solid, homogeneous, and very hypoechoic, as in this case. Sometimes they can have atypical features, though, such as cystic degeneration and rarely calcification. They're usually ovoid or bean-shaped, and again with that long axis-oriented craniocaudal and they're often hypervascular. Most will be posterior and inferior to the thyroid gland as in this case, mimicking a nodule, but a hyperechoic line separating the adenoma from the adjacent thyroid may be seen. And sometimes this is better appreciated on real-time imaging. Here we can see that there's that thin hyperechoic line, this ovoid, very hypoechoic, solid nodule oriented in long axis with the thyroid gland. This patient also had a Technetium 99M Sestamibi scan. Here we're looking at a coronal planar image 30 minutes after radiotracer injection. And you can see that there's normal salivary gland uptake bilaterally, also normal uptake in the right thyroid lobe, left thyroid lobe. But then we see increased tracer at the left lower pole in the region of that parathyroid adenoma. On a two-hour delayed scan, we can see that the tracer has mostly washed out of the thyroid, but it is retained in the level of that parathyroid adenoma. This is better localized on the SPECT CT images where we've overlain the nuclear medicine images onto a CT. You can see that there's marked avidity there at that lower pole of the thyroid. On coronal imaging, also we can see that on the left on this axial image. So these scans are very helpful for localization. There'll be radio tracer uptake that persists within a parathyroid adenoma on two hour delayed images. System A is initially taken up by both thyroid and parathyroid tissue, but it will wash out more rapidly from the thyroid. There's a greater than 90% positive predictive value for preoperative localization of parathyroid adenomas, and SPEC-CT can further aid with anatomic localization, as in this case. An alternative modality to localize adenomas is to use 4D-CT, which is a multi-phase CT imaging technique. Localization is important because these can be ectopic in location in about 5% of patients. Those sites can include the lower neck, the mediastinum, retrotracheal or retroesophageal regions, in the carotid sheath, and even intrathyroidal. These can be difficult to differentiate from thyroid nodules and can mimic TIRADS category 4 nodules since they're solid and very hypoechoic, but they're often more homogeneous than thyroid nodules and will have that potential linear interface with the gland. Also, the clinical history is critical. Let's move on to the next case. So this was a female patient in her late 20s presenting with severe hyperparathyroidism together with lytic bone lesions thought to be brown tumors, which is a form of bony resorption that can occur in the setting of marked hyperparathyroidism. And here looking at a transverse view of the right thyroid region inferiorly, we can see the trachea is here. There's a large lobular, very hypoechoic solid mass here. When we turn sagittally on that, we can see it's quite multilobular and very hypoechoic, measures about four centimeters. There's the adjacent thyroid gland. And when we add power Doppler flow, it's markedly hyperemic, 
And that's further brought out with MV flow, which is a form of microvascular flow imaging that can detect slow flow in small caliber vessels. So we can see it's markedly hyperemic. And at surgery, this was also proven to represent a parathyroid adenoma. So while I mentioned that adenomas are usually oval or bean-shaped, these larger adenomas can be multilobular. But they should otherwise still follow the characteristics we described, meaning the location is often posterior and inferior to the gland, and the long axis will be oriented cranial caudally, parallel to the gland on sagittal images. Another finding that can be seen is the polar vessel sign. That's often a finding described on CT, but can also be seen on ultrasound. And that's the presence of an enlarged feeding artery or draining vein terminating at the parathyroid adenoma. Returning to those flow images, we can see the flow throughout the large parathyroid adenoma is somewhat coalescent at the margins, which may represent a polar vessel sign. Here on this real-time image, here's the normal thyroid compared to the hypervascular parathyroid adenoma. And you can see here as we scroll through it, just how hypervascular that adenoma is. Quite impressive and typical for these larger adenomas. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this educational. Thank you again for our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Apple or Spotify or by clicking the YouTube subscribe button. To see bonus teaching material that I post throughout the week, follow us on social media. The links are in the show notes or click the YouTube community tab. Until next time, radiology is life. <laughs>